joining us now, Hillary Rosen and Scott Jennings. So, Hillary, these two new polls which came out over the last few days show President Biden's approval rating dipping significantly. Uh, you see it down to 44 percent in this new ABC Washington Post poll, 43 percent in an NPR PBS poll. How concerning are those numbers for Democrats heading into 2022? I think that they're um, thinking about 2022 at this stage is kind of premature. I think, you know, we're going to see a renewed effort coming, you know, this month back to the Senate, back to the House to actually pass the legislation that Joe Biden promised the American people he was going to pass. And I think that as long as he is doing the job, he said, get the pandemic under control, get people vaccinated, get the economy moving again. I think people are going to reward that at the polls, and I think um, that's what they're they're focused on is getting this stuff done and and hoping that the election then takes care of itself. So, so as we look forward to that election, uh, it was interesting uh, what we heard from Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger over the weekend, urging his party to refrain from pushing lies and conspiracies. Take a listen. All I can say right now is my party has to embrace truth. We have to have a full reckoning of what happened on January 6th, and we have to turn away from conspiracy. I think if we're going to be in charge and pushing conspiracy and pushing division and pushing lies, then the Republican Party should not have the majority. Scott, do you agree? Uh, should the majority in the House, should Republicans, if they were to gain it, should they not there? If they keep embracing the big lie, how damaging is that moving forward? Well, I think the January 6th matter is actually far more impactful for 2024 than, than 2022. I think the midterms already favor Republicans. Historically, they would favor Republicans anyway. Uh, you see the American people turning against Biden for a number of reasons. If the economic indicators continue, if people remember the shame of his Afghanistan decision, if we continue to have inflation, uh, we continue to, to find out that Joe Biden isn't the person that he told us that he was during the campaign. I think the, the wave could be building even greater than history uh, might otherwise indicate. The January 6th matter to me is far more impactful for the next presidential election. Uh, but I think for the midterms, frankly, Republicans are in a good spot. And with all due respect to Adam, who I respect very much and like very much, uh, I think it would be an epic disaster <laughs> to advocate for Democrats remaining in the majority. Uh, when you see the uh, extreme policies being pushed by Biden and his party. Hillary, I I'm going to guess, <laughs> knowing you too well, um, you don't agree with that, specifically the way that Scott has, has set up where things stand right now uh, for President Biden. What's your take on what we heard from Congressman Kinziger? You know, he did say in that interview beforehand that he was a Republican and wanted them to win the majority. But but I, I think the point he is making is one that is important and it is relevant to the midterms, even though Scott doesn't want to talk about it, which is why should people vote for a congressman who lies? Why should they want a, a majority leader and a speaker who lies to them every day in fealty to Donald Trump about who won an election, you know, almost now a year ago. And so I think there is something to that. But I think most importantly, Democrats are delivering. Joe Biden is going to be delivering what people want. These provisions are popular. You know, moms are staying home because they don't have affordable child care. People are worried that these storms are never ending unless there's some uh, aggressive action on climate change. There is support to move infrastructure. So I think if Democrats still deliver what they said that they were going to deliver in the last election, that's what the midterms are going to matter most about. You know, there is a lot of focus, understandably, on the issue of abortion, which is coming front and center again based on what we saw with this new law out of Texas. Hillary, today, Attorney General Merrick Garland promised to protect abortion clinics in Texas by enforcing a federal law that prohibits people from blocking entryways to the clinic or making threats against patients. Um, but really, is that enough? I mean, how much of a difference do you think that is going to make? No, it's not enough. And I don't think that he or the president thinks it's enough. I mean, as a you know, it is frightening to think that women in Texas are going to have this kind of government control over their bodies where vigilantes you know, can come and, and, and enforce a law, you know, for money. So I think that the attorney general is doing everything they can. There is a law on the books that says that you cannot threaten anyone uh, going to an abortion clinic and they're going to try and use that. 
But really, what we need is a is a Supreme Court decision in Roe v. Wade to be codified into law. A huge percentage of the American people do not want this law changed. Members went to the Supreme Court and got confirmed, like Justice Kavanaugh, promising in uh, senators that he was not going to change this law. There is a real threat to, to women's independence here and, and women's health care. And I think that the Republicans are going to rue the day that they support this Texas law and that they've supported such a dramatic shift in um, women's rights. Scott, there is concern among some conservatives that this could really backfire on Republicans and could harm them at the ballot box. How concerned are you, specifically when it comes to, for example, suburban women? Uh, I'm not too concerned. I mean, look, the, the confines of most elections are broadly fought on these lines. Republican is the pro-life party, Democrats the pro-abortion uh, and we'll do just about anything to defend abortions. And Republicans, in most cases, will do just about anything to push pro-life jurists and pro-life policies. I don't really think that has changed here. Now, if we have a Roe versus Wade uh, decision next year in the run-up to the midterm, I, I think that would be the time to relook at the political calculus. But at the end of the day, I think you got to ask yourself, um, what are people really going to be voting on next year? I think it's going to be on the economy, the state of the country. Does Joe Biden... Uh, have the judgment, competence, and honesty that he promised us during the presidential campaign. I think that's why his approval ratings are down right now. So I'm dubious that abortion is going to be the number one issue in the election when, you know, people are going to the grocery store and their bills are skyrocketing, and skyrocketing every month with no end in sight. We will be watching for all of it. Hillary Rose and Scott Jennings, thank you both.